How much money do car dealerships make on new cars? Many people think it's just the difference between MSRP and invoice, but for new car buyers out there, this idea is missing a lot of critical information. Why should you know this stuff? Because knowing about all the different ways a car dealer can throw things at you to put more money in their pockets is critical to saving your hard-earned cash. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy. And joining me in studio today is the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. Thanks, Kevin. And welcome, everyone, to the home of the best hassle-free car buying service available on planet Earth. Friends, when negotiating with car dealers, oftentimes you will run across a dealer that complains loudly about not making any money or enough money on your car deal. 100% true. They could be raking in thousands of dollars, but will always try to guilt you into paying a higher price. Of course. Don't pay attention to their endless whining. As you'll understand in a moment... It's all BS. We're going to reveal how new car dealers really make money and why you should never, ever feel sorry for them. After all, most make a million dollars a year or more in profits. Used car dealers also take advantage of many of these profit centers we'll discuss today. Fighting dealer greed is a constant challenge to understand for car buyers. So here's the deal. If you get a great deal and simply focus on the price of the car, you may not think the dealer is making much money, but when you factor in all the other ways a dealer can make money, a $10,000 profit is possible off of just one sale. $10,000. Can you imagine leaving ten grand on the table each time? That's how you go broke and how the car dealer keeps investing millions of dollars into these casino-type showrooms. Of course, that size profit is not typical on all car deals, but most dealers do make the bulk of their profit in areas other than the actual sale of the vehicle. In fact, they love it when your only focus is on the price of the car. Think about the next time a dealer is whining about not making profit. By the way, if dealer games we're presenting here today really get on your nerves and you'd like a hassle-free car buying experience with the help of a seasoned professional, you can skip all of these problems by visiting our website, thehomeworkguy.com, and reading up on our world-class hassle-free car buying service. Do it now. Nobody has ever regretted going this route. When it comes to how car dealers make money on new cars, we are going to be peeling back the layers of an onion, and there are several layers in play for us to talk about today. It's no mystery that car dealers make more money than you think. As Liz has already pointed out, ignore the dealer saying, we're losing money, and just take a look around at the facility that you're sitting in. Oh, yeah. Let your eyes show you the evidence of the truth. Millions of dollars made off the backs of ripped-off car buyers get poured into these showrooms, making it necessary for the dealer to make millions more from a whole fresh batch of future unsuspecting customers. You know, financing is one of the first big opportunities for dealers to make money. And that's why we said years ago that you cash car buyers should not start your communication with a dealer by saying, I'm paying cash. Dealers love customers who take out car loans because it allows them to hide a lot of stuff we'll mention shortly in a monthly payment proposal. For this reason, we've said for years that you need to come in already pre-approved with your own financing if you need a car loan. To wrap your mind around this, you must first be aware that most dealers don't make the bulk of their profits on the sale of a new car. The big profit usually comes through arranging loans, forcing buyers into purchasing their overpriced add-ons, tacking on ridiculous fees, and making a nice sum of money when they basically steal your trade-in with a low-ball offer. We'll cover all of these in depth today. You should be aware that dealers can easily make a profit of $3,000 just through the financing alone. And that just gets them started. So how do they do this? Basically, dealerships work with third-party lenders, also the manufacturer's lending arm, to offer financing options to customers. The dealership earns a commission for every loan they secure, which can add up to thousands of extra dollars. The commissions often come as marked up interest rates on your loan. That's the old buy rate versus sell rate issue. For those of you who don't know, the buy rate is the real interest rate a given bank offered the dealership on your car loan. The sell rate is the marked up or fattened up interest rate that the finance office increases it to for the purpose of pocketing the extra money. The very few times the car dealers don't make money on financing is when the manufacturer offers incentivized 0% APR deals which is why car dealers hate it when manufacturers offer these incentivized financing deals. It's a fascinating discussion about how much money dealers actually make on car financing. As we've explained, when you get a car loan financed through a dealership, the dealer isn't actually the ones loaning the money. Dealerships work with several outside banks and they simply arrange the financing for you. The banks they prefer to work with are the banks that do the most for the dealer and not for you. This banking service from dealer finance comes at a cost. Just like any service where there's a middleman, you can expect to pay a commission, sometimes a lot of commission. 
And indeed, that is exactly what happens. Dealers make their commission through what is known as finance reserve. This is an extra percentage they added to your interest rate, usually between 1% and 3%. For example, a dealer may be able to get you financed at 5% interest rate through one of their lending partners. As Liz explained earlier, this is what's called the buy rate, the rate at which the bank is willing to loan you the money. But for the most part, the dealer finance officer will keep this figure hidden from you. What they will show you is the sell rate, which is the interest rate that includes their commission. Mm -hmm. In this example, they're going to say you're approved at 7%. That gives them a 2% commission. The 2% difference is where the dealer makes their money when they arrange the financing for you. You might be tempted to think, hey, 2% isn't that bad, but let me show you how big a deal it actually is. At first glance, it may not seem like much, but an additional 2% of interest expense can really add up to a lot of money. For example, if you are borrowing $45,000 over a 60-month term, a 2% finance commission would come out to $1,980. That is pure profit the dealer would make on just a 2% finance reserve. That's close to two grand coming out of your pocket, artificially jacking up the price of the car. Here's another common example. Let's take a look at a $70,000 truck, Ooh. and a lot of people are paying that for those vehicles these days. Taken out for 72 months, and that seemingly little 2% reserve is costing you 3455 bucks. Now, that's meaningful dollars. Yep. This is such a lucrative opportunity for car dealers that many states and lending institutions have put a cap on the maximum interest rate a dealer can charge for arranging financing. The cap is usually 2.5%, but in violation of this law, dealers can and sometimes do charge higher amounts. Let's look at an extremely abusive case. A completely illegal 5% interest rate hike on a $45,000 loan over 60 months equals $6,969 in extra profit for the dealer. Unreal. Do you see why it's so tempting for dealers to risk breaking the law and overcharging you for that loan? It's a big incentive. Yep. Obviously, now you can see how car financing can be a huge profit generator for any dealership. This is why you should not say, I'm paying cash at a dealership. Does it make sense now? Hopefully, you get it if you didn't understand it before. So, how do you prevent them from charging a large commission when you arrange financing? By far, your best defense is always shopping your own car financing before going to the dealership. Get rate quotes from your own bank and consider talking to your own credit union, too, Make the dealer meet or beat your rate. Once you get your own outside financing rate quotes lined up, you can take that to the dealership, as Kevin said, and you tell them that they have to beat it in order to get a shot at your business. In this case, you won't even have to worry about whether they're charging you a finance reserve because it will be very minimal if they'll be able to beat that best rate. You can always ask to see the lender approval, and a few honest dealers will actually show that to you. Many dealerships will be hesitant to show you the document, so again... It goes back to your best bet being that you arrange financing on your own beforehand, then have the dealer compete to try beat it. Well, let's move on to another highly profitable opportunity for dealers to pack on the profits in your car deal, the dreaded add-ons ooh, or dealer addendums. Car dealers charge consumers billions of dollars annually for add-ons. In 2021, it was estimated that consumers spent around $42 billion on add-ons like extended warranties, service contracts, and countless other extras. That's a ton of money, friends. It all spent on junk. <laughs> yep. Please comment below with the add-ons that were pushed on you when you bought your last car. While these add-ons significantly increase the overall purchase price of a vehicle, that happens often without providing even a cent of equivalent loan value. That's a recipe for long-term financial disaster for you, friends. Because the value of your car does not go up with all that junk you're buying. Exactly. The dealership will most likely offer you various types of add-ons. They come in a variety of ways and costs, such things as extended warranties, as Liz mentioned, and these are things we don't really endorse. Gap insurance that's almost always sold but often not needed, or other accessories that are mostly garbage. These add-ons can really increase the dealership's profit margin. For example, an extended warranty may cost the dealership $1,000, but they are likely to try to sell it to you for $2,500, and then they pocket the profit of $1,500. By the way, that's a very common markup on an extended warranty. If you ever get offered one of these and are feeling tempted to bite on it, never pay what they are asking. Never do it. Try counter-offering the finance officer 50% of the cost that he or she quoted you. Don't be surprised when they still agree to take your offer. Dealers have to be a bit careful with the number of add-ons, so a typical profit padding amount for dealer add-ons is about $750 to $2,000 in additional profit per sale. However, it's been known in extreme situations to hit $4,000 or even more. If you don't want to get stuck with forced add-ons, read 
tying the sale on the FTC website. It prohibits dealers from forcing you to pay for products you'd likely never go out of your way to the dealership to buy for your current vehicle. Right. In other words, the products don't stand on their own, so legally you can't be required to pay for them just because you want their vehicle, no matter what they tell you. The next profit maker is your trade-in. If you're trading in your old car at a dealership, you won't be getting the best deal on your trade, period. Dealerships will offer unsuspecting car buyers less than their car is worth so they can make a significant profit when they resell the car later, right? For example, if your car is worth ten grand, the dealership may offer you 8000 saying it has a few issues and there's low demand. Then they'll clean up the car, make some necessary repairs, and sell it for a decent profit, most likely for four to $6,000 over what they paid you for it. By the way, I want to mention here that one of the things our team's negotiator, Stuart, does extremely well for our hassle-free car buying service is to get excellent trade-in values for our viewers. So if you have a trade-in, it's no problem. We'd be remiss if we didn't mention dealer fees right here. Oh, yeah. Dealers are notorious for having fees for everything under the sun, and they just keep making up more categories of them. Just say no. For example, if the average price of a new car is around 40000 the dealer fees alone could amount to 3200 to four grand per vehicle. And make sure you see our famous video titled 11 Fake Fees, if you haven't already seen it. If you saw it a while ago, go back and refresh your memory. It covers things like dealer preparation fees, advertising fees, VIN window etching fee, which is nothing but a total scam, the common documentation fees, delivery fees, and many others. 11 Fake Fees was published in the fall of 2019, but it is still just as relevant now as the day it was published. Sadly, some things just don't change very much in the car business. Next up, service and parts. Dealerships also make money through their service and parts departments. When you bring your car in for maintenance or repairs, the dealership charges you for the labor and the parts. They may also try to sell you additional services or upgrades for your car, such as a new air filter or a brake service. Over the life of the vehicle, these additional services can add up to thousands of dollars in profit for the dealership. This is so lucrative for dealerships that if you mention that you're likely to come back to the dealership for your service, it could benefit your price negotiations. Very true. And if you do bring your vehicle in for service, don't be surprised when somebody from the sales department approaches you and says, I just had a customer the other day who was looking at a vehicle just like yours. That story is total bullshit, but they always hang around the service department in the attempt to get customers to trade out of their vehicles early. Right. Let's also hit on another big profit center, markup on new cars. Historically, dealers would not make much profit on the sale of a new car. That's a time when new cars would sell for much less than MSRP. In our recent market, however, dealers have been selling new cars at a price much closer to MSRP, allowing them to make a significant portion of their profit through the markup from the wholesale price. When a dealership buys a car from the manufacturer, they pay the invoice price, which is lower than the MSRP or manufacturer's suggested retail price. The dealership then adds their markup, which can range from a few hundred to several thousand dollars. And a few dealers are still catching largely uninformed car buyers with market adjustments, a number that can be as much as $1,000 to an extra greedy $10,000 in markup. This strategy got really bad during the pandemic, hitting even close to 50000 in some extreme cases. If you saw numbers even higher than this, please comment below. When demand is higher than supply, like it was during the pandemic or plandemic, as you might like to think of it, dealers were commonly tacking on additional dealer markup which is basically an entirely bogus fee on top of MSRP. Let us know if this nonsense is still going on in your area. And if you do, please make sure you name the dealer. We would love to out them. Thank you. We couldn't wrap up this video without talking about holdback, floor plan loans, and manufacturer incentives. They are three big dealer profit centers on top of all the other money they collect. Car dealerships also receive a holdback from the manufacturer, which is a percentage of the invoice price of the vehicle. Holdback is essentially a reimbursement for the cost of floor plan financing of the inventory. Most people incorrectly assume that dealers pay for all of their vehicles and have a bunch of money tied up in their inventory, but this is mostly false. The vast majority of dealers take out manufacturer loans to build their inventory and are essentially renting the vehicles they have on their lot. Sure. Most manufacturers provide this financing, known as floor plan, but that's not all. They also reimburse the dealers for this cost through the kickback that we're referring to as holdback. It's usually 1% to 3% of the invoice price of the vehicle. For example, a typical dealer may pay three fifty per month to finance each vehicle on their lot. If it takes two months to sell, their cost is $700, but the holdback amount usually covers this. 
If a dealer sells a vehicle in less than a month, they will make a tidy profit simply on the holdback amount and on what was essentially a free loan. Dealerships also receive manufacturer to dealer incentives, which are cash incentives from the manufacturer for selling certain models or reaching certain sales goals. These incentives can add up to thousands of dollars per car sold. These are largely intended to be passed along to the consumer, but if you don't know they exist and are available to you, the dealer will still cash them in and just pocket the money. We mentioned this recently on our new Car Scams video. Check it out if you didn't see it. So here's the final kicker, the art of negotiation. But this one is up to you. This is where you, the buyer, come into play. Have you seen our Out the Door Negotiation Hack video? Have you seen our Don't Negotiate show? How good are you at haggling? The bottom line is you've got to be very good at negotiating or positioning yourself to have a chance to win. Unfortunately, you might be one of the many people who really suck at this game. If so, you're passing up a huge opportunity because you should be aware that if you know what you're doing, car dealers are usually willing to negotiate the price and even all their add-ons and fees, especially if it means closing the deal. You have to know what to say, and it takes a calm but commanding approach to get it done right. That's why it's always smart to do your homework, know the market value of the car you want, and being prepared to deploy pro skills. Yes, pro skills, like our man Stuart. If you want to bypass all the dealer games we mentioned today, visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com, to study up on our hassle-free car buying service. It's the best there is with the biggest payback on your investment. Nobody can touch the speed and efficiency we operate with. The cost savings are unmatched, and the overall great customer service we provide with our hassle-free car buying service is hands down the best available in the market today. So there you have it, friends. Dealers make money on new cars through a variety of ways. Sale prices, financing rate bumps, manufacturer incentives, the difference between wholesale and retail prices, selling add-ons, and of course, defeating car buyers who are poor negotiators. If you're going to go this alone, understanding these factors can give you a serious leg up when you're ready to hit a car dealer's showroom floor. Also, if you love the quality of our shows and you never want to miss an upcoming new video, while you're visiting on thehomeworkguy.com, sign up for notifications directly from us by clicking on the yellow button for content notifications. I send out a reminder email for all new shows, which you can check out for yourself and also forward to family and friends. Here's why you need to do this, even if you subscribe here on YouTube. I'm going to show you proof that YouTube has stopped sending our show notifications to our subscribers. Check this out. On a video we did not long ago, out of 44,000 views, 39,300 came from YouTube recommendations. Just 1,100 came from our subscriber notifications, and we have over 435,000 subscribers. 1,600 views came from people we sent notifications to directly from our website. Unbelievable that our website-based notifications are outperforming 435,000 subscribers. That is really messed up. Seriously messed up. Serious. Yes, friends, YouTube has been waging war against us for quite a while now. It's like the platform is hoping that we'll quit, but we're not going to. As Liz said earlier, visit our website, thehomerguy.com, and read up on our hassle-free car buying service. Nobody ever regrets going this route. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to our longtime followers out there, you guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the Homework Guy team. God bless you all. Thanks for listening.